Okay, so grand. Got there in the end. Uh, right, yes. Click. Yes. Right, so um, in, in my mind, 20, 2015 was the year that all the designers in the world finally added the two letters U and X to the CV and the LinkedIn profile. And also, I, I, I would like to think that 2016 is the year that we bring it back to science. Uh, so I'm Chris Minnery, hello. Uh, you may well know me as one of the more prominent busybodies behind the Drupal Apprenticeship Scheme, but in my day job, I am a consultant in uh, UX and strategy. Uh, I've been using Drupal for 10 years now, and, uh, and unlike uh, the vast majority of people uh, in UX, uh, I come from a more development background rather than a, a design one. Uh, I started building websites at uh, end of the 90s when all websites looked hilarious. And, uh, uh, and a lot of the industry was people like myself who were freelancing and did the, uh, did the entire thing themselves. You know, they did the design and they did the um, requirements gathering and they did the build uh, in tables. And, uh, and you know, basically we, we, we did everything. Um, then uh, around the turn of the century, I got a gig doing a, an extranet for the Peabody Trust. And that was a place where like, the Peabody Trust and the, the, the architects and the contractors could all like, swap and just booted the computer. Um, they could swap versions of plans for all these buildings that were, that were going up in, uh, in Silvertown. And, uh, and that really for me is when, when my job became, I, I guess that's when I started in UX, although I didn't know it at the time. Uh, it's when my job as a web designer or web developer became uh, more about people doing things, people achieving things, doing tasks, getting to places, getting information, rather than um, any sort of artistic uh, design. Uh, that's it, all right. Remember your notes. <laughs> so, um, so UX is kind of is, is I think it's, it's different things to different people. Right? Um, for a designer, it, it, as a designer, it's a it's a way uh, that I can reframe my subjective artistic opinion as objective fact. Uh, for a front end coder. It's, uh, it's a way that I can spend three days of budget messing about with a new CSS animation technique that, that, I, that I'd like to try out. I, I'm pulling your leg, of course. Uh, but lots of people, uh, clients mostly, tend to think of UX as, uh, as, as interaction design or as interface design. And, um, and while that's true to a certain extent um, and you know I'm not uh, I'm not saying that those things don't matter it's that the, the you know they're, they're a part of it and and lots of uh, lots of decisions especially early decisions around those sorts of things interaction and, uh, and interface can uh, to my mind be made well, you know you can make wrong decisions easily by making them too early I'm already dying of thirst. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, thinking about um, these, the, you know, the, the the strong things, interaction and interface. They're to me, they're like the, the icing on the cake of the, of the product. And and while icing is nice, if that ratio is completely wrong and you've got ninety percent icing and and ten percent cake, it's shit cake. <laughs> um. Also, do, doing these things at the beginning, uh, like even if you're, uh, even if you're just thinking about them, it's good to think about these things, record them, come back to them later. But uh, but getting too involved in, in these sorts of things early on, 
and can also lead you to um, confirmation bias. You've heard, of, you've heard of confirmation bias, but if you haven't, it's uh, that you, you know you once you've once you've got an idea about a thing, then you will want to confirm that. So the things that you will do, the investigations that you will do, the outcomes will lead you to confirm the thing that you already suspect, rather than being nice and objective about it. Uh, so UX for me, it goes it goes further than usability as well. You know, the the fact that you can do a thing is different to um, the fact that you liked to do the thing and 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 you enjoyed the experience of doing the thing. You know, it's it's uh, what it comes down to is behavioural economics and like in terms of in terms of money and a lot of modern sales psychologies. Um, the challenger sale, for example, they really support this idea with evidence that I haven't got any slides of, but trust me, that um, the, the way that you feel when you buy a product or you are in the purchasing process or the, you know, the interaction process, the way you feel is much, much more important uh, in terms of whether you will actually complete that sale or that action and whether you'll come back. And that's more important even than things that you would consider, you, that you would postulate are more important, like price and um, the, the value that you get back. So that's uh, interesting to me, at least. And, and also, you know, part of, I guess, why UX is, is, is so important now, because it's been identified with its, of the value that it puts money in your pocket. Uh, so yes, love UX. Um, it's also like, I, there. There are things that you can use UX for that help in design and development process. Um, you know, having people to. To have a good user experience, you need to be testing that and to, and to educate your clients into the fact that you want to be testing stuff earlier and more. It's good, but you know they're, they're, they're often scared of that sort of thing and, they're in the, and they might not want to pay for it because they think, well, why do you need to test it? You should have just built it properly. But, um, you know, I think the putting things down and, uh, and, uh, and, and having measurement frameworks that are about users' needs, users' actions, and, uh, you know, and KPIs and stuff that the, 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 the clients, you know, need and, and love, having those about users uh, is, is very empowering to the project rather than um, disempowering to the client. The, I don't know if that actually makes sense. Uh, what I, I guess what I'm getting at is you you do you do user research, and the outcome of your user research is a bunch of data that then you you get to communicate with your client about this data about what you should be building, and um, and that, you know that's uh, that's useful on on, on loads of levels. I mean, not uh, in no small part it it levels out um, stakeholders, so people's people are less likely to find reasons that their pet feature should go ahead when there's a bunch of data that says, well, the, your pet feature doesn't help any of these users. It's just a thing that, that you want. Perfect. That's great. <laughs> Come back to life. All right. One moment, please. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, that, what that means to me is less talking, more clicking. Get through the slides really fast, then we'll go to the pub. Uh, right, yeah, back to... Yeah, the importance of data. Um, Jim Barksdale, former Netscape CEO, he's got this famous quote you may have heard. If, if we have data, let's go with data. If, we, if all we have is opinion, let's go with mine. 
Now, in the, in, in the modern world, that, uh, or in my opinion, what that, you rephrase that as uh, if we have data, great. If we don't have data, uh, let's go and get some data and make some good decisions. Uh, so, what's the problem? Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a weird slide, but I, I was in a bit of a rush. So, I'm, you know, I'm Googling what's the problem. Image search, and then weird. <laughs> That'll do. Um, yeah, it's, it, like it's hard to put this, it's hard to put it together, and uh, you know, it's hard to um, sort of suddenly inject user experience, uh, discovery, and testing into uh, like existing processes. Um, you, it, it, people sometimes end up. Um, split up and siloed. So, okay, so this is, the, the designers can do this UX part and they go off and, um, you know, do, do some discovery workshops with, the, with your clients or what have you. But, um, the, you know, the danger of that, I guess, is that if, you, if you're a non-technical designer and an account manager go off and, uh, and, and do a big discovery session, generally what's going to come back out of that meeting is a big kick in the balls for the desk team. Um, But, and, and I guess like what, what we're trying to aim at is, um, you know, this, this ideal of the multidisciplined agile team working together from the start. Um, and, and I think UX is, is actually a good enabler for that because uh, of things that I'll, I'll talk about in a second. That there's, you can get some common language around the things we do as developers and the things we do as UX practitioners. Um, I got the idea from this session from a post that was on A List Apart last year. Uh, and I'm going to just look up the lady's name because I've robbed some stuff from her. Uh, Sophia Vos Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski. Um, and she, she, her post was about when she was designing uh, an interface for the CNN presidential elections in uh, 2012. Uh, and she got into the project really late and, they, and, and, uh, and then they, she had to design this uh, mobile app that was, that was going to follow, uh, follow the election. And uh, she had four days before development began. And, uh, and her boss says to her, oh, don't worry, the devs only need one template to start. So just design one template and give it to them. But then she freaked out because how is she supposed to, um, you know, how, she, how can she design a, you know, a page, a template in, in a whole system, like designing one cog in a machine when she hasn't roughed out the, the, the entire machine. So what she did, what, what she presented to them was, was, the, was this thing here, which is um, uh, essentially it's a system of objects. It's interchangeable related parts of a machine. And that's what, that's what she started to wireframe. And that's what they took into the first sprint. And then they, they iterated on um, this, uh, you know, these wireframes of objects. So this is not just wireframes, but you also sort of describe the architecture of the app. Yes. Yeah, exactly, but um, not not in any great technical detail because because she's a designer. Yeah, she's just you know, and this is it's like atomic design, right? You know, this is what we're trying to you know, we're trying to push our designers to or or you know, it's, it's not like we're in charge and pushing them, but uh, you know, we're we're wanting to to look at things at this sort of object entity level. Um, Yeah, so like, you know, this is this is quite, this is quite a big deal to us, like, especially as you know how we work in Drupal with uh, with entities. These are this is kind of what we're after. But and then I, I guess the thing um, I think to mention, the thing to avoid is um, whoa, it's just spinning around and you right. I have to do it, just do it with this one. That's it. And yeah, yeah, I've done that bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. This one. Um, yeah, I think a thing to avoid is um, like any sort of siloing. You know, we, we, do we understand that that is you know, that's a bad thing? So you don't want to have the a designer do, do mock up this lovely PSD and then just hand it to a developer and say, "Now build this beautiful thing." And in, in the same way, um, 
interestingly, at a, uh, at the North, Northern UX meetup the other day, there was a guy talking uh, who had come from a, he was a designer, but he joined a very technical build firm who had then got their designers in, and the process was kind of reverse. So they had like, they, not now, but the, the thing he was talking about, they had their designers in a little silo, and they would mock up loads of tech stuff and then just say, design that, you know, and that is, both things are, are, you know, wrong and inefficient. Don't touch it. Um, yeah, sitemaps. You know, sitemaps are, are a completely daft thing that, it, um, you know, people are still holding on to. They're, you know, they're, they're, they still do exist in the world and they're, and they're very important to bots. Uh, but in, um, when, especially when clients are telling you what their information architecture is, it's completely daft. Because, you know, the very best that you could, that you could ever hope for is, um, like, uh, you know, it's, a, it's how they see themselves in, this, in the organisation, their organisational data, which is, you know, by, uh, you know, it's very doubtful whether that is going to be how a, a user wants to, uh, wants to see a thing. Yeah, what, so the sitemap, nonsense. What we're looking for is um, elements, connected elements, and, and, and prioritization of the, the parts of the elements. So, like, um, what's his name? Mike, uh, Mike Atherton, his thing of mobile first, which is, you know, uh, kind of adopted. And, and a mobile first doesn't re even really mean... Um, that you're designing for a phone first. I think you know what 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 I guess has come out of the of the last few years of this is that it's it's really about prioritization and that you are able to prioritize um, not only like a, the elements of a process that you want to guide a user along, but but also you know the um, the objects that we're building and the parts of the uh, of the machine. And prioritization, uh, hang on, where am I? Yeah, forcing that into, into single columns, I think, is a, is a grand idea. Like, um, and, and going through processes like that, not only with, uh, you know, not as a, a, a designer by yourself or as a... Um, you know, as a, as a customer even by yourself, but like grouping that, that exercise and making that a group exercise. So you have representatives from the development side, front end, and the customer, then you're all, you know, you're all collaborating on this idea of what is important and why, and, you're, and you start to talk about these things. Yeah, and a lot of, uh, when, so in, in, in roughing something out, in prototyping something, when, when we start to build something, we're, um, we're uh, you know, unless we're building like a, a resource library where all the resources already exist, then what we're working with is uh, instantiated objects. So we, what we need is a way to talk about these things that will be and the things that will be inside of them that, uh, that works for everyone. And uh, that is what um, I, I would say is object-oriented user experience. It's, you know, it's to do with the discovery process, really. And um, I do know, and I have, been, I have been picked up by a couple of people on the slightly flirty title, whereas uh, it's, it's objects is the important bit rather than um, any, any more direct correlation with object-oriented programming. It's, yeah, it's about putting object design over procedural action design. And not that that doesn't happen, but then that, you know, it comes later. Um, oh yeah, I've got a quote here from, uh, from Mike Aston again. That thinking about a system through the lens of real-world objects in a user's mental model, products, tutorials, locations, not digital world actions, search, filter, compare, check out. So, so this is this is the bonus, right? The, it, the, this is how this is how we like to think and plan as as developers. You know, we want to know 
um, how object X relates to object Y, and we want to know whether object A is uh, comprised of lots of object Bs, and uh, what attributes will object X uh, inherit from object B. Uh, and, and starting to talk about these things early on, I believe it's, like a really, it's a really good foundation for cross-discipline communication and a discovery process that involves everyone from the beginning. Uh, like I said, matching the user's mental model and talking about the objects that the, that the user will recognise may, makes the, you know, the prototyping process easier, the build easier. Yeah, you, you get simplicity and clarity out of that as well when you start to talk about things as objects and, and, and parts of things. And uh, arguably, I mean, dependent on, dependent on the project, of course, but when, when things are, they start being objects right at the beginning, then they become easier to iterate on because you're adding parts to objects, adding objects to objects rather than... Um, you're getting to an, an end of a process and then seeing that you need to tack something on. Uh, also, arguably, better APIs should come out of this sort of approach of thinking about objects earlier on. And you get, um, you get loads of SEO brownie points as well because, uh, because you can set up the contextual linking, cross-linking really easily. Um, and, and that, that, I think, is, is, is a really big win. This is, so this is so this a recipe site with like, persistent navigation footer and everything take, taken out. So just thinking about them uh, as the objects. So we have ingredients and recipes and, and a chef. And then you can see that there is, you know, there's just infinite ways to loop around all of this content as a user. And, and, and all the extra investigations that you could do around those things by you know, changing the priorities of these things and, and seeing how that influenced user behaviour and, and user satisfaction and you know, the, the amount of stuff that you could set up and test is, a, a, is incredible. Um, yeah, so, so even, you know, we, we developed thinking about objects but designers tend to think and design procedurally. And, then, like, and the, the object-oriented um, interface design is not a new thing. This book is, uh, is from 1995, um, where you know, it's an entire book advocating the, the, the whole thing. And, and, and you can't wonder like, what happened. Why did, why did, we, why did we even stop um, you know, designing in this way? And I, and I, I have a, a, a half-assed theory that, um, you know, when we got into the, uh, like the early 2000s and everybody must have a website and, and, uh, and there was the, the big boom and uh, lots of, I, I guess, agencies who had been used to doing like a, a, a visual graphic process, then they just repeated that process and they had that, uh, that relationship with their clients and they wanted this sort of design review early, early stage, whereas... It, it really ought to come uh, a, g a good deal later, I, I, I would argue. So, um, talking about a, a, you know, a, a process, a practical way of, uh, of, of implementing this sort of thinking, this sort of working. So, this is a, a, a brief uh, whereby I've you know, written this thing out. Um, this <laughs> Just realise this is it's the rules of presentation, isn't it? Don't put loads of text on a slide, and then and then don't just read out your slide. <laughs> so I'll just do that. <laughs> uh, so give DIYers an outlet to post their home improvement challenge, soliciting potential solutions from product companies, brands. Uh, so the DIYers get expert solutions from their challenges, and brands get exposure. That's that's the platform that we're building. So uh, DIYers can search and browse existing challenges, commenting on the proposed solutions. Brands can search and browse for open challenges that might be a good fit for one of their products. 
Um, the DIYers can close the challenge after a solution has been chosen, later follow up on how well the solution worked. Brands can create a library of solutions that can be reused for various challenges. Okay, so that is, uh, you know, that's the, that's the client's idea, you know, helped along uh, into like a, a sort of succinct way of explaining what we're going to build. So, step one of, uh, uh, of this method is extract the objects from the goal. So, you basically, you can just highlight all the nouns in the, uh, you know, in the, the key deliverables and the, and, the, and the goals that you're after. And the, it's not just, you know, it's not just highlighting nouns, you know, there's a process of, of talking about what you're doing as well. And like, could, for instance, you can see that um, exposure is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a result, that's not, that's not a thing that we're, that we're building, it's, it's, it's the result of what we um, build. And, you know, we pay more attention to, uh, to nouns that keep popping up, like challenge and solution. Um, ones like library, yeah, we're, we're, that's more of a, a list rather than, a, rather than an object, a list of objects. So we're not, we're not too concerned with that. And we can infer an object from the actions of commenting and following up. So we need some sort of comment object. And you know, we can also make notes like the challenge object will need multiple states of um, I I, I, I posted, in progress, closed, has feedback, that sort of thing. Um, so once we've got these, um, these objects that we've popped out, oh, this has got a um, oh, yes, professional. So um, we pulled out all the objects on one colour sticky. And then we can start to pull down all the, 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 the other objects that live inside these objects, you know, the, the fields. So, so name, profile pic, short bio. You can't really see it here, but then I've got, I've, I've got yellow post-it notes for, the, for like the core content, I guess, and um, blue ones for metadata. Uh, and, uh, and what this ought to do as, as a group is provoke loads of really interesting conversations about what you're going to build at a very, very early stage. You're, you're talking, you know, about what particular fields should, should go in. So, you know, I would put as much down as possible and then if you don't agree on a particular field or a particular thing that ought to be there, then just question mark and then you can come back to that later. Can, you, can anyone even read them? Is it? Okay, good, good, good. Um, oh, and the other thing, so the, these ones are, this is step header, step description, step mode. So this, in, in the solution, I'm imagining that there is some sort of step solution and each step has a header, a description and maybe an image. So then that, is, you know, I've just stuck them together and made a note that they're, they're a thing that might be repeated. So you might have step one, two, three, four. Um, so, yeah, it also, pro, uh, you know, it uh, provokes other conversations about things that may not be, may not have been in the brief, but may be really useful for users. Like, should a user be able to add a budget to a solution? Is that, you know, is that useful? Do, uh, do we want to do it? Um, so then the next step of this is re-adding the, um, the objects as objects inside. So this is a, now we're talking about how these different objects relate to each other. And yeah, it's not, not enough just to put say, a brand here. We, 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 there's a discussion around how the brand is an object inside a, um, inside a DIY's uh, profile. Um, Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So, we're there, so what, it's, what the red inside red is representing and being talked about is the relationship between those two objects. And then, you know, this is before we've done any drawings. This is, um, 
Yeah, we're, so, you know, we're, we're talking, uh, talking about it as a group um, before someone has drawn a picture of how this already relates to another, you see? And, like, and you know, when, when you get it, you, in like a, a more sort of waterfall-y process where you get a design and you, and you, or you get a wireframe handed to you, then like as a developer, then you need to reverse engineer that and get all the, the objects out of it. So what I'm suggesting is that we just skip that step and, and, and uh, or, or do this bit first, and then the wireframes can be wireframes based on the conversations that you've had about it. And then, oh, and then next step is when we start to do the prioritization, which is the which is important from the from the user experience and also the you know, grand conversations to have with with clients as well, because then you know they're getting buy-in into the process and their understanding about um, how people will interact with their products becomes more evident. And I, this, this is quite arbitrary, the way that, that I've done this. So it's, it's more just for effect of than what I actually think is, you know, is the priority of importance. And this is not necessarily, you know, the, um, the order that things would be displayed in. Like, you know, this doesn't translate directly to, like, oh, my mobile app goes, when I'm looking at a DIY, it goes name, and then there's a profile pic, and then, you know, it's all in one column. It's just about the prioritization. So everyone's kind of agreed and understands about the priorities of these different things before, before we go into the further stages. So, yeah, so then uh, how this relates into, uh, into Drupal is, um, I think it's kind, of, it's kind of clear that this is the way that, that, that Drupal wants to work, you know, that with um, having entities that are related to other entities across the board. And, you know, this, doing exercises like that with the, you know, moving all the post-its around, you could, you know, I guess you could immediately start, spin up a Drupal site and, start, and, and prototype something in that before, you know, potentially even before or at the same time as designs, you know, layouts are being discussed and, and iterated on. Um, the, like, my favourite thing about, uh, about all this sort of thing is I'm a really big advocate for um, involving everybody as, uh, uh, as early as possible in, um, in, in any sort of build, because, you know, like everybody is going to come up with with valuable information in the you know in the discovery phases. It's not it's not one person's job to go and extract some information out of a client to in order to make something work well. I think that that's that's about the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> didn't didn't finish up so well, did it? But. Uh, <laughs> Probably, probably could. Uh, well, right, I'll just make a note. Work on, work on finishing it better if you do it again. All right. Uh, any questions? Yeah, that's it. And I think that. Yeah, and if you have content, that's grand because then you you know you start to design for content first, which is you know, uh, or you know all of the content strategists and and UXers who are so hot right now are totally advocating the the content first approach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah, it's, like, it's the age-old thing, isn't it? When someone's, there's been a design review, and uh, and uh, congrats, it's really good. Don't worry about it. The, it. the designs were signed off immediately. They love it, and then you, then you come and look at it. What's this new bit? Oh, that's just a little thing that I flourished in, and they and they really liked it. It's like great. That's like, that's like an extra week of dev. Any others? 
All right, pub time. Cheers. <laughs>